Hey, I wanted to share with you a little bit about what we're doing at the clinic that I own and what we're helping clients do when it comes to good faith estimates. Today is January 3rd, 2022, so the No Surprises Act is now officially enacted um, and in, in force as of Saturday the 1st. So there's plenty of articles out there and videos out there about who falls under needing to provide good faith estimates, when you need to provide good faith estimates, um, to which patients you need to provide good faith estimates. So go look at those. I'm just going to give you a little bit of background of what we do at the clinic and what we've advised most of our clients to do as of you know, since we've been consulting back in 2017 all the way to now and then what we're doing to update that for folks, uh, especially now that the, the new requirements for a good faith estimate are a little bit more detailed than what we've been doing in the past. So this is the document here from CMS. It is the CMS 10791, and it's basically a good faith estimate template that they have. And it outlines a little bit of information around um, what constitutes a good faith estimate. Obviously, it can be done orally in writing, but you need to have it in writing. It tells you a little bit about when these things need to be given to a client or a patient. For example, if the patient or client schedules an appointment, an initial appointment, more than 10 business days out, um, you have three business days to provide them with a written good faith estimate. If they uh, schedule within that three to 10 business days and you can, you have to provide them a good faith estimate within one business day. And then if they schedule within three business days or it's Monday and they schedule an appointment for tomorrow, you don't need to provide them a good faith estimate. So, um, and this is kind of just their, their instructions for how to do it, the paperwork and all that. And they kind of outline a little template here for you to follow. And then there's a disclaimer at the end for the patient or the client all about what a good faith estimate is. If you're billed more than the estimate, this is how you go about getting a um, disputing the bill and the process and all of that. So that's that. Let's get to that, that out of the way. And I'll show you a little bit of what, what we've been doing um, since, well, they were doing this before I bought the clinic and then we've continued it, kind of updated it a little bit since uh, October of 2020. So whenever anybody books an appointment with us at the clinic here at Proactive or any of the clients that I've worked with through Re Rehab U that we've advised and helped put this process in place, we give everybody, we called it a financial counseling form. Um, and it was something that they've always done and we've always done because we believe in transparency in healthcare and, and pricing and all that kind of stuff. So there was obviously the patient demographics, their name, the date of appointment, their date of birth, the date of the estimate that we provided it for them. Um, and then we broke down their primary insurance carrier, if they had any, um, and their secondary insurance, if they had any. And then we gave them this bit here. So uh, on the initial evaluation, you can expect to pay X number of dollars and then each additional visit will be X number of dollars. And that was based on either the cash rates or the out of network rates um, or what we had pooled from Availity or from that provider. We did institute something in 2021, which was basically a hard verification on anybody that came in so that we could be as accurate as possible. So we have a team of folks that actually call insurance companies to get hard numbers from them for a specific patient or client so that we can be fairly confident in the in the estimate that we were providing. Because in here we talk a little bit about, obviously the, the patient is responsible, this, that, and the other. We There was a place for the somebody to sign it from our organization. This was either the billing manager or me as the owner. And then the, the patient or the client would come in and sign it. Or if it was um, a minor, their, their parent would sign it, whoever the, you know, the ultimate responsible party would be. And that's kind of what we've been running on. You know, they've been running on a version of this since 2011. We started, we modified it a bit and have kept going with it since 2020. So this is what we've been doing was not required and it's still not required under the No Surprise uh, Bill Act if you're in network or if you're a participating provider with that patient or client's insurance company. Now, we still do this and we're still doing this. We just filled out a few this morning for, for new evals that were coming in over the week. So we'll get that out of the way. 
This is the updated one, and it's based off of the template from CMS. And let me see, yeah, if I can get it for you. It's based on the template of, of CMS. Obviously, we have our contact information here. We have the good faith, oh, look, typo. Good thing I'm, I'm reading this now. Live without a net here. So there's a section here for the, the patient demographics, all of that kind of stuff. The In order for it to be an official good faith estimate according to this new bill, this new law, you need to have diagnosis codes, you need to have procedure codes, um, all of that. So this is kind of like a face sheet, if you would, an executive summary, if you would, for the, the estimate. So it's got the, the patient or the client diagnosis information and demographics. Then it's got a little bit here about um, this is how much it's going to cost, the total estimated cost, the provider name, boom. And that's basically the, the cover sheet, the face sheet. Then you get down to the actual estimate. Now, the, this form, the one that CMS has on their website, I think is, let me pull it up here. I want to say it's something like 10 pages long. Now, one page is the, yeah, 10 pages long. One page is the instructions. So theirs is nine. Ours is uh, three pages total, really two and a half. And only because we, you know, we only have one provider or one facility that we're working with. If you have multiple facilities or if you're, um, if you've got um, maybe a two different, two or three different clinics set up and there the patient might be receiving services at multiple clinics, you're going to need to update this to reflect each location or each facility. So us, we're only doing one facility at a time. No one's coming to, you know, three or four different clinics for PT <laughs> or anything like that. So what you get here is this is Boom, this is a, a list of all. We're going to list the primary service. It might be a physical therapy evaluation or it might be physical therapy evaluation and treatment or occupational therapy. You get the point. Um, the date of service, if it's scheduled. If it's not scheduled, um, then obviously you don't put that there. The estimated costs are valid for 12 months. This is required if what you're providing is going to be a recurring cost. So the patient or the client is coming in for multiple treatments. So ancillary healthcare providers, PTs, OTs, chiros, speech therapists, this, this applies to you. It's good to keep this wording in. And that's this is directly from the CMS template that these costs are valid for 12 months from the date of the good faith estimate. So this throws a little kink in your plan if you're or in your in your process if you're planning on increasing your fee schedule at the end of your cash pay rates your out of network rates at the end of let's say this year or this calendar year or maybe Q2 of 2022 you're going to have to look back and see all of those clients that you have on the books who have an active um, an active good faith estimate and they're to my understanding after reading it like this is what they're going to pay until that expires, right? Or if you discharge them and then they come back and it's a new case and then it's a totally different, you're giving them a new good faith estimate and all that good stuff. So and that's basically there. And then we've got the provider information. This would be for our main office here. So you know, shoot us an email at billing it proactive. We'll talk to you. Um, the information for the facility, you need the, the NPI, the type two NPI, and then the tax ID. The services, the items, the diagnosis, because obviously some of this is blank because this is just a test that or a template that we're using for uh, clients moving forward. But this would be like, for example, a PT evaluation. It's going to happen at a Redale Avenue location. Um, these are the service codes, you know, 97161 all the way up to 97163. There's only going to be one. And then the estimated cost. And this would be um, if we do a benefits verification, if we're in, you know, out of network, but we're accepting some maybe something like a Medicare Advantage plan or something like that, or um, something through the multi-plan, for example. Um, we'd put the expected cost here. If not, we'll just put our out-of-network or our private pay right in there. All the CPT codes, so maybe they're going to get an evaluation and a treatment, a 97110 or a 97140 or something like that, the quantity and the expected cost. And then down here, you need to put the actual cost or the, the total from this column here. Um, maybe it's, you know, 150 for an eval, 50 bucks for, uh, therapeutic activity and maybe 20 bucks if you're going to put them on East or what, whatever it's going to be. And you would just add that up and put it here. Additional healthcare provider notes. This might be where you say something like, obviously you're not going to, this total cost here won't be 
reflected in every subsequent treatment if it's going to be a plan of care or something like that. You're only going to be billed for an evaluation once, maybe a reeval at the time of discharge or at some point in your plan of care. Um, but you have to put all these CBT codes in, whatever the quantity that you expect them to be, or just give them the units, right? Um, and that might go in here in the notes as well. Like, you know, your, your treatment um, plan might change, um, or your treatment per visit codes might change depending on your situation and what the, the clinician thinks you need to do, right? You're not going to do um, all manual therapy one day and then all neuromuscular re-education the next day, there's going to be a mix and it's going to kind of be based off of that specific patient and their that treatment. Then here's a disclaimer, again, directly from the CMS's template um, about good faith estimates, yada, yada, yada. If you um, if you've been billed more than the good faith estimate, you have the right to dispute the bill. This is how you can go finding the information, finding the form. I think patients have four months, yeah, 120 days, four months um, on the original of the date on the original bill. So they could potentially come back four months after this and go through this process, this dispute process where they pay 25 bucks and um, you know, basically try to get it canceled. So hopefully that helps any of y'all out there that are looking at you know, how are we updating our processes and procedures based off of off this new bill? I know that it, this is one of those things that's going to cause a lot of increased work for providers. <laughs> and it's going to be one of those things I, I told my team this, uh, this morning that we're going to be building the plane as we're flying it basically, right? Like as we know uh, something changes or um, we miss we miss, we miss something or you know this is going to be an iterative process until we have it all the way nailed down we're going to keep providing uh, this estimate to all of our clients uh, even if they're out of you know in network with us or we're in network with them just because we believe in the transparency and then we're going to begin throwing this one in for all those that we see that we might be out of network with so anyways hope that helps have a good one